So they, they are thinking of, okay, prevention at that point, um, what do they need to do? So they need to, to get more trees, to start stabilizing the area. Um, so, but what happens when it rains? So we can use uh, simulation models to, okay, it's raining and we can see how the water will go through the, through the areas. Uh, we can be prepared, okay, what type of things we need to, to put in place to mitigate them. Uh, the, the disruption of a flooding, what is going to be the sort of responses, where to place uh, emergency facilities, hospitals, or um, shelters for the people that is affected, and later on how to get back to the normal situation with the recovery. So pretty much we might be able to use different type of models to get uh, a, a good simulation about this one. Um, some of them are going to be mm, weather related, so we have this one here, so you can um, think of uh, weather related things, um, fires and raining, earthquakes and so on. Um, in, the, um, when in the room we can also use physics to model the, the behavior of the people, so pretty much uh, when you are in a room you run, um, there is a speed and acceleration, you have a specific weight, so you can consider all of those things into these model and uh, physical models. Uh, when you are running um, in panic, there is you make some decisions. So some of them are mm, influenced by your the, the knowledge you have. Uh, but if you don't have too much knowledge about where are the exits and so on, uh, you might end up following a group of people or going on by yourself. So those are the type of things that you think you, we can consider in the in the simulation model. Um, herding, so they go with the people, or you just go long wolf and go different places. So we can include those type of things in, in our simulation models. So for example here, So in this simulation, so you have two exits, some of the people know where are the exits, some of the other people they don't know where is the exit and then you have some uh, the two behaviors. Um, one of the standard behavior is where do you run? Where the people is running. So you just follow the people and go running behind the people. And some others are okay, no, there is too much crowd there, so I'll go a different way. So you can mix those type of behaviors in a model to see how long does it take for the room to be completely evacuated. So if you see uh, at this point all of these people, they don't know where to go, it seems okay, so now they are sort of following the people and getting out there, some of them are just basically alone go looking for the exit and eventually they will leave. So you can test, okay, what if you have um, uh, labels that basically will show you where the exits are? What if you have uh, uh, some sort of uh, um, leaders, okay, we are in this room and then you'll nominate this person will basically guide this group of people to the exit. So pretty much you can uh, evaluate those type of things, uh, preventive or preparation actions. Okay, let me see. So then um, what, what you can do with the simulation models, and in the case of, of for, for example, Colorado Springs, they want um, something like this. So we have, um, let me see. This is a, a, a simulation model. This is um, Venice and, and the channels. And what they want in Colorado Springs is, once there is a flooding, there are some areas that you have to evacuate. And what you can pretty much, what people does is they get just whatever they need to get, if they know what to get, get in a car and then leave. What they want to do is to explore, what if um, everybody knows where to go? What is gonna happen with the main roads? Are they gonna get congested? Is there gonna be some accidents going on there? Uh, some people might not want to leave, they will stay there. So then we'll have um, emergency people going back 
uh, against the flow. Uh, everybody's leaving the, the area, but they have to go back and get those, those families that didn't want to leave. So they want to evaluate traffic, how to, after a disruption, like a flood in, in Colorado Springs, what is gonna happen with the traffic, what roads are gonna get crowded. Um, do you, if, if everybody knows, so if you live in this area, the best route is this one. If everybody knows that, it might be more organized, but if you don't know, pretty much you want to get to the highway as fast as possible and then you'll go um, wherever you think that is, is the fastest. So in this type of model, so if you see, um, we are gonna be able to model. So if you see, those are the, the, the Venice channels and all of those little things that you see like ants are in the, the model of, we are simulating boats. So boats going through the channels and we can do that. If we have plenty of information, and then we do, it's basically the, the maps, which are for free, and if you have um, a survey about the people with cars and, and their behaviors, which kind of they have, you can try to put together a model and see what if everybody knows where to go. So then it might be more organized. So what do you need to do in order to get people, everybody in that area to know? where to go and how to get to a specific uh, um, um, shelter or a hospital also if they, if they have some issues. So you can, um, in that case, use these type of models to see, okay, if nobody knows, what is going to happen? If 50% of the population knows, what is going to happen? If everybody knows what is going to happen and then based on the impact, so what is the, is, if everybody knows, we have a pretty smooth evacuation if just 50% of the population knows where to go and how to, to get there. We have some crowded areas, so what do we need in order to increase, to be prepared in order to, okay, we need to get everybody a text every single day saying, so if you live here, goes to this, if you live there, uh, do we need to um, uh, do advertising on TV or radio and so on? So you can put together different measures to somehow increase the level of awareness and see what happens if, for example, 50% of the population know about where to go and how to get there. So pretty much, um, let me see, what we are doing, what, what, what I'm planning to do with simulation is, um, is this type of things. What if scenarios? What if everybody knows what if just half percent of the population 50 percent of the population know and so on um, why also it is safer so you don't want to start uh, um, basically measuring that one in the real system okay so nobody knows or just this uh, f small no um, amount of families know about where to go and how to get there, so let's see what happens. So you can just put together a, a simulation model, it's safer, you don't get people dead in a simulated environment, it's less disruptive, basically you don't want to test it in, a real, in the real system, and, and it's cheaper. So it's, uh, most of the times, is the time that it takes to develop these simulation models and the skills and the people is way, way cheaper than just putting it in a real situation. Uh, even though you can, one of the things to increase awareness is uh, what they do in the schools, the drillings is what they call, so then it's pretty much to increase awareness to something happens, there is a fire in this school, where to go. You can train, uh, you can basically do that one before trying it in the real system. Uh, so in, in general, we are, plan we are planning to do prevention, so evaluation of measures to avoid uh, disrupted outcomes from disasters. So what to do to basically uh, prevent disruptions from a flooding, from a fire, from an earthquake, from a... Now oh, um, I'll show you later a, a web page, and now one of the biggest extreme events are terrorist attacks. So there is a lot of money going on to, to be prepared for that. And then uh, preparedness is pretty much precautionary measures to mitigate. So if you can prevent them, that's go for that one. Sometimes a tornado, is, you know that it's gonna happen, it's gonna go through some areas. There is no way to stop a tornado or a hurricane. So in that case, we need to be prepared and then mitigate the effects of those things. Um, after it happens, is uh, the response relief. 
uh, earnest evaluation of measures to provide help to the communities affected by disasters. And there is a really nice note in, in Philippines, you know, that a couple of uh, weeks ago there was a, a, a typhoon and basically uh, damaged uh, some cities and communities and then um, the people there obviously is uh, stress and so on but uh, people in Philippines are mainly Catholic and the main relief for them was to have a place to go to, to Mass and so that they were saying pretty much that before before mass everybody was kind of stressed, sad. Then they had the the Sunday mass and pretty much okay, we lost everything, but we got mass and everybody now is like in a different uh, you know, with a different feeling. So they want to to start building. So those type of things, response and relief. You might not know. Okay, you might think no response and relief. Get them water. Get them food. Those, th those things are important, but you might be able to evaluate, okay, what happens if you get them shower and they can get a, a shower and so on, that might be also important. And you can evaluate those type of things. And later on, recovery pretty much, what are the type of things that you need to do to, to get the community to the normal condition? So, and then uh, just to, I think that is, just to finish, um, so we have potential projects here. Uh, and again, um, uh, this is something new. So uh, I guess that was in the summer that we got a contact through Propel mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to, to start. Somebody that belongs to the emergency response uh, team in Pueblo, um, he became the director of the emergency response in the Springs but he still works here in Pueblo, and he had he expressed a lot of interest on developing a tool like this, initially as an education, an education tool, and um, there is um, there is an NSF grant. It's called the Rapid Response, uh, and those grants are granted in a one month, two months time frame, and they are up to two hundred thousand. Uh, total with the 